So this next section is aseptic barriers to address the problem of stethoscope contamination. At aseptoscope, we developed the first touch-free aseptic barrier solution for stethoscope hygiene. Guidance from our clinical experts outlined the clinical attributes associated with the solution, and from that we designed this, the Discover system. Sanjeet, as an expert in infectious disease, why do single-use aseptic disc covers make sense? I'll start by giving an analogy. Why do we have a single-use glove for each patient? You use it, you throw it, and you don't take it to the next person. So when you're using a stethoscope, and if you're rounding on 20 patients in a critical, you know, critically ill patients who are susceptible, and you're moving from patient to patient, and during this whole uh, meeting today, we have discussed the fallacies surrounding uh, decontamination or sterilization or cleaning, lack of uh, any particular protocol, how to clean your stethoscopes. If you have something which is disposable, single use as a barrier, which is aseptic, what could be better than that? Um, so intuitively, it will prevent anything which is on that stethoscope being transferred to somebody else. That's the key. As simple as that. Yeah, so the, the disposable touch-free part of that is the key. Yeah. Because in my hospital, I got a big old box of gloves sitting there, and you reach inside with your dirty hand and grab some gloves, and you contaminate the whole box. Yes, I know I'm supposed to wash my hands first. Yeah. But the problem is, is putting on wet hands into that box because I'm in a hurry, then I can't get the glove on. It's a real issue. So the touch-free system is a, is a real advance because you walk up and you go and you walk down the hall and you're done. You touch the pace it and it goes in the garbage can. That is absolutely correct. I'm saying that's, that's the whole, how should I say, the whole point of it that you're not touching things. Yes. That's the key part. Minimize the number of touch. Like in any room in a hospital, how many touch surfaces you have, how many you have to wipe down, and on you, what do you have? You have your fingers, your hand, you have your stethoscope diaphragm, and if you don't touch it to clean it, you just put it on and go on and then just take it off and throw it and go on. And that's the only part that's going to touch the patient is your fingers and your stethoscope. Yep. Nothing else should be touching them and, anyway. And I, I think if you, uh, you guys brought up the science part of it really well, but also the patient satisfaction and customer service piece of it, the fact that if you had a system like this inside of the room and it takes a second, to put your stethoscope, the patient is observing the process. They're, they're seeing your commitment to both your, you as the physician and the, the institution's commitment to hygienic care. And they're seeing on, uh, on the way out the door, you dropping in, you dropping the cover into the, into the trash can. There's a sense of comfort for the patient in the, in that, you know, there's, no transmission of, of, of uh, pathogens, They're, you know, that we care about, uh, about quality and safety. Uh, I think it's a huge customer satisfier. And I think based on that, you can also develop protocols. You know, just how you have protocols for hand hygiene. You know, you have people watching and you can have protocols where you can teach the entire healthcare providers, no matter who that person is, that this is an expectation of stethoscope hygiene. Yeah. You walk into a room, you put it on, you go examine your patient, uh, whether you're a respiratory therapist or a physician. And, the, you know, with that, because this is something objective which is out there, which is written down, then you can measure it and you can actually give feedback. I think the other part of that that really touches on both of your points is that patient satisfaction is not just something that we want to do because it's the right thing to do. It also has consequences in remuneration for the facilities. And one of the things that um, I found we, we did um, to try and help the providers as well as the patients recognize what we were doing was letting them know when we come into the room as we introduce ourselves, I'm washing my hands to prevent you from getting infection. I'm using this stethoscope barrier to also prevent you from getting infection. It increases their awareness, which is good for all of us, as well as increases the opportunity for you to go through that. So those processes and protocols and verbalizing it does a really good job for everybody and it turns out causes them to acknowledge that you were doing that in their um, feedback. I don't know, Sinji, in your, in your shop, there's, a, there's surgeries that go on, transplants, et cetera, and people come back with some wounds. 
and which is, you know, who thinks about disposable stethoscope when you got an open wound? I think in our cardiac intensive care unit, the open heart surgeries that come back, I am freaking amazed. You got a chest open covered with a few stitches and the house staff, the circle house staff's all around. Sometimes a patient's wife or something is in there and their stethoscope's going right over, you know. And there's nothing worse, by the way, to get a chronic mediastinitis infection. There is nothing worse. So this is also low hanging fruit. I'm just surprised that they aren't coming to us pleading to, to give us a protection. It may go with other uh, open wounds that you get, partially covered wounds in your facility after they get their procedures. Well, I'm saying any time there's a wound, there's a contaminated skin, and if you have, you know, uh, medical students or residents, if they're four stethoscopes going all the time mm. together to listen to something, which ideally shouldn't happen, but if it happens, there's four different vectors going in different directions. And having an expectation that you put it on and you listen, if there's a wound, you want to be careful because you can pick from one person to another or other to that person who has an open wound and then you bring something to that person that can have consequences. An important part of this is that the barrier actually works. It has to be a barrier. It can't yeah. be um, like a sieve. And so we have done a number of studies to examine that. Um, the first one we did is we took uh, a, a group of stethoscopes uh, and smeared them essentially with uh, infected urine, infected blood, infected uh, sputum, uh, and stool on all over the stethoscopes. And then they got randomized, half got covered with a barrier, the, the disc cover, and the other half were just left alone and put in the incubator. And we pulled them out every 15 minutes and then every day and then over a week. And we looked at those and cultured them. And the ones that were just there with material on them were all covered in bacteria. And the ones with a barrier across the board were clean. Now, I'm not suggesting that you can leave a barrier on for a week, it would defeat the purpose, but you can put it on and be rest assured that nothing is getting through that barrier um, of, of those samples. We've also done that with C. diff. Specifically, same exact study, we smeared stethoscopes with C. diff. Half of them got co covered, half of them didn't. We cultured them and a week later, the, the ones with a barrier were clean. Yeah. And the ones without a barrier had C. diff all over them. And so it's, we've proven very closely that the barrier is what it's advertised to be, which is a barrier. Um, I bring this up because uh, Dr. Kara wrote an, an editorial about this uh, on the articles we published um, on the, uh, uh, the scope of the, the rebirth of the scope. How did that go? New, new hope for the stethoscope. The new hope for the stethoscope. Okay. So you, you made a great point, you know, coming out with what do we really need is the barrier. And now we have done a study which has shown that the barrier is acoustically invisible and the study that was done by you showed that C. diff and other major pathogens were, you know, not being transmitted any further. So I feel like this comes out to be the game changer um, f over the last century. You know, this is something that works and it does not lead to any dampening of sound that we want to really hear from the patients. And um, really this is the new hope for stethoscope. So basically, what you mean is that obviously the stethoscope is not getting contaminated and as you take off the uh, aseptoscope discover uh, cover, your stethoscope is very good to go on from one to another, but the, the hope is that you're going to take it off as you go because that cover still has bugs on it, yeah. but your stethoscope is fine. Yes. Yeah. So when you go to the next one, you slap on a new one and you keep on going. It, it works both ways. If you start with a clean stethoscope, it stays clean, which is great. And, but if you start with a dirty stethoscope, for whatever reason, it's a barrier for that patient. Right. And the surface, the contact on that patient is clean. Right. And then you throw that away. So. And then I'm, again, impressed by the fact that think about how much time you're saving by this process compared to the washing of a stethoscope. Uh, <laughs> before and after, before for, 60 and after for 60 seconds. Yeah. So that's important for us to remember that, uh, you know, the, the wisdom in all of this is to create technology that facilitates, uh, you know, better workflows, better processes that gets back to what Stuart said at the beginning, which is give more time to the provider, to the doctor, to the nurse, back to the patient, which is what is most important while maintaining safety and quality. The triple aim. The triple aim.
Exactly. So, so from the third hand to triple aim? From the third hand to triple aim. Uh, you know, if you wanted to summarize this whole uh, concept is, you know, uh, the goal of uh, triple aim is improve quality, reduce cost, and do it in a manner that, that provides the highest service and satisfaction to the patient. <laughs> and uh, this technology, it clearly improves quality. Uh, it it allows for the acoustic sound to be transmissible, as as uh, Dr. Kara said, it's invisible with or without the barrier. It ensures that there is no transmission of pathogens from one patient to the next, or to the provider themselves, which is huge. Uh, you know, it improve it reduces cost. We talked about five or six dollars a stethoscope uh, for uh, a disposable stethoscope, but you know, just think about every multi-drug resistant organism that goes from a patient to the next patient, adds length of stay to the hospitalization, adds mortality to the ho uh, to the patients. In fact, multi-drug resistant organisms, just uh, you know, in general increases your length to stay twofold, increases your mortality twofold, and doubles your cost, right? So if you think about it from that perspective, it, it, it is a game changer by reducing cost. And lastly, the, uh, this technology is, uh, is, as we described before, allows us to share with the patient that we are committed to safety, we're committed to quality, they can see us uh, uh, ensure that our stethoscopes are, uh, that is going to touch the patient momentarily, is, is, gotta, uh, is clean, and uh, I think the, it's huge from a patient satisfaction perspective. So it, we are meeting the triple aim with just the simple technology. That's a home run. That is a home run.